What's going on, everybody? It's Portal back with another Madden Ultimate Team video, guys. And today, I'm going to be going over the base elite wide receivers for Madden 22, guys. Now, if you guys seen the last video, we hit the quarterbacks, we had the running backs. Today's wide receivers. I'll probably do tight ends next and then get up, I'll get on over to the defense and probably just do like the top base leads on defense in general. Unless you guys want to see positions, that's fine too. Let me know down below. But of course, guys, today we have the top eight wide receivers. I think I have eight for this list because, of course, there's a lot. Like with quarterbacks, there were 13 base leads. With running backs, there were like 17. If I had to do each and every one, it gets messy, by the way, after eight because it gets like 80, 80, 80, 81, 81, 81, 81, 81. It gets to the point where it's like anyone could really fit there. And those aren't as fun. I believe the top eight are the best. So, coming in at number eight, guys, we have DK Metcalf. Before we get into this, let's head on down below, hit that subscribe button, turn on that noti bell, give this video a big thumbs up. As always, of course, guys, if you haven't already, comment down below. Let me know who you're, who's your biggest jump wide receiver this year. Like Justin Jefferson, is he making the top eight? He's an honorable mention. Is it Metcalf? Is it um any of the other guys who came onto the scene last year? Calvin Ridley. Let me know down below. But I got DK Metcalf. He had a monster year. Was on pace for even greater things too. With the offense slowed down a little bit, but. He had a great, great year. So DK Metcalf, I could see him easily getting an 84 overall here, which is for me replacing Odell. Odell was one of the other 84s last year, but I did have Metcalf taking the spot now since Odell got injured. He'll probably fall a little bit. But Metcalf at an 84 overall basically will be one of the best, best, best wide receivers probably in the game. He had an 87 speed, guys, as a base gold. So if you have to, you have to understand that he would have been one of the fastest guys in the game to start as a base gold, and he gets a plus eight increase here which may not directly correlate to speed but i think it will correlate a lot to his actual wide receiver stats so i believe he ends up with all 80 catching for the most part like 80 high 70 low 80 catching he ends up in the mid 70 route running maybe low 80 route running with an 80 release also he may actually get close to tyree kill speed with like maybe an 88 89 speed off the rip with a six foot three frame which makes him look crazy and a 288 weight which is just going to be a really really good dominant wide receiver card day one so i'm super excited for this card could be a fun one also we'll get some stiff arms some break tackles some juke well-rounded wide receiver next we have amari cooper now amari cooper i think reclaims his 84 spot once again primarily because he was on pace to have an amazing year until Dak went out i don't think his downfall and you know his, his um his worst second half of the year really had anything to do with him Great wide receiver, one of the better route runners in the NFL. Surefire hands, at least he has been as of recently, and really, really fast. Um, and again, a base of Mario Cooper probably ends up around an 84 speed again. Same stats as this. You know, high 70, low 80 catching and route running. Good speed, good change of direction, well-rounded, six foot one wide receiver. Michael Thomas, I think, takes a dip down to the 85 overall range. And this is because he had a pretty, pretty decent, he had a down year in comparison. And even, he was hurt a lot, he was hurt a lot. And when he wasn't hurt, he didn't know his reform. And then when he was, you know, ready to go back, then Drew Brees wasn't around. Overall, statistically, it wasn't his best year. And with Drew Brees retiring, that may hurt him a little bit too as well. But I don't think he takes a massive dip, but I think he does come down to 85 overall. And as an 85 overall, guys, he won't be a usable wide receiver. He wasn't usable as an 88. His speed may only be an 82 or 81 this year, or an 83 again, which still isn't worth it. His catching, spectacular catch and route running will all be mid to high 80s. But he will take a decent dip, which will also hurt him as well because his speed also isn't that usable. Moving on to the next one, guys, we got Julio Jones, who I think, again, reclaims his nine, his 86 overall spot. Uh, Julio, I don't think, goes up or down. Had a good year. I don't think it was enough to go up, but I don't think it was enough to go down. Kind of just stays put. He's on the Titans now. A Julio Jones card, as per usual, is pretty dominant day one. Gets the above average speed for the beginning of the game. Gets the route running. Gets the catching. Gets the six foot three frame, 220. He'd be, like, he'd be like a better route running, catching, slower version of DK Metcalf, right? Same body, same frame in terms of height and weight. The only difference is DK will be faster and more athletic, and then Julio will be a better catcher route runner. So honestly, you could run both of them. One could be like that deep, you know, go route kind of guy, and Julio could be a little bit of do-everything kind of guy. Julio will be great, though. Again, his card art will look different because he is going to have the Titans card art, of course. Uh, moving on, guys, Stephon Diggs, I think, actually goes up to an 86 this year. Had a really, really good first season in Buffalo. Many people doubted that, uh, you know, that that chemistry, how that would work out. Worked out well, and that was only his first year getting used to Josh Allen. And again, Josh Allen's first year of getting used to having a number one wide receiver. He typically was always like a, you know, make it happen kind of guy. Take off, run, make a play. He, you know, he got used more to, he got used to Stefan Diggs and his route running a lot. And it definitely showed. But Stefan Diggs is going to have a pretty good card. With an 86, I think he ends up with around an 85 or 86 speed. He'll have all above 80 catching, route running, and release. Good agility, good juke, decent change of direction, and of course, he will be one of the better day one receivers. Again, will he be better than Julio and DK and all those guys? Maybe not. It really just depends on the speed, right? Because day one, you're looking for either speed 
or insane wide receiver status, right? Next, we have DeAndre Hopkins coming in at 87 overall. I think he reclaims that spot once again. I don't think he moved up because there's two other receivers I think had a better year than him, but I think he does stay as one of the top wide receivers in the game. But similar to Michael Thomas, guys, he isn't that usable because he's too slow. Uh, they got to stop giving him such low speed. He's actually pretty fast. But 84 speed once again. He'll be kind of like Julio, but slightly slower. Going to have a 6 foot 1, 215 frame. He has good catching, good route running, good release, decent juke and change of direction. But again, he's one of those middle tier like a Stefan Diggs where they're not fast enough to be the speed demons on your team. But they're also not above average enough to where you can just use them and you know just care more about the catching and route running. But you can get a guy like Julio who's going to be faster and have similar, if not better, catching and route running. Um, Hopkins is fun. He's cool. But there's better options. But again, he's going to be a top guy. Devonta Adams, again, this one sucks about basically wide receivers. Devonta Adams is in that same spot as Michael Thomas. It's going to be a beast in terms of like route running, catching. I think Devonta Adams actually takes an increase to an 87. Had a great year. Really one of the best wide receivers in the NFL at this point. I think maybe he gets an 84 speed this time around. Gets about 85 catching, catch of traffic. But similar to Hopkins, guys, this has just been the curse of the basically wide receivers for the last few years. Literally every year, it's like, you know, you know who it is. It's, it's, it's DK, you know, the rugs the um the rosses basically it's like that for slow like lower for teams and then tyree kill the odell's and julio's it's always the same basically wide receivers that people actually use until they end up getting legends or some team of the weeks or some superstar mvp you know any kind of promo ltds but Devonta adam's gonna be these are good wide receivers and again this is a different year of madden so this may not be the case remember this could be a year that's predicated on animations and route running and stats and less about speed right because we did see in the beta like a guy, a, you know, with the next gen animation and stuff, with the way a wide receiver can make a cut, the way they actually chop down on their routes, it actually may be really vital to have a guy like Devonta Adams versus just having a guy who can only run north and south. But that remains to be seen. On paper, Devonta Adams is a great wide receiver, similar to Hopkins and Thomas. And a little, I actually think Diggs is better, but similar in, in that base now. For guys, so the top wide receiver, in my opinion, for Madden 22, it's going to be Tyree Kill. Again, Tyree Kill, he started off in Madden, right, when we first got him. A special teams kind of gold kind of guy right that was it had a pretty good year had some breakaways ended up being a low elite super fast everyone wanted him had another really good year came out had a pretty good elite and then you know had he became a top wide receiver in the nfl uh you know people used to say all he all he can do is catch streaks all he can do is you know gadget plays that is not true he runs a lot of routes in the route tree he actually, I mean, you know, he's not doing like quick outs and stuff like that, but he runs a lot of different routes. He catches contested catches, which proves he has hands. And a lot of times he goes up and gets it over people that I didn't think he was tall enough to even do. Um, he is now, you know, he was an 87 last year. Now, last year he was like a top three wide receiver in Madden. Not, not, not in terms of, you know, I'm talking about overall. He was the best one, you know, with that 90 speed day one. It's just unbelievably fast. You have to understand like their cornerbacks, like you're, people are going to be using their free players. No, not everyone gets the god squad day you know the first week they're using their their free jason mccordy 89 uh you know i mean sorry 79 speed they're using their free linebackers at 75 speed the eric hendricks with 73 tyra kill is going to be looking like he's running at three steps for every one step they take it's not it's going to be looking he's going to be like flashing around all the time but now this year guys tyra kill is no longer just a gadget player he actually had another insane year probably the best wide receiver statistically last year at least one of them and I think he takes the 88 spot. I think he takes, like, just like Derrick Henry and Mahomes, he becomes the elite player at his position in terms of, you know, day one base elites. One more, he probably ends up with a 91, 92 speed out of the gate. And with the power up, of course, which makes him just a dominant card for quite a while. Honestly, I hope they don't do it that high because then again, he's just getting too close to that threshold of, you know, end game speed already. But still, still very, very good. Of course, you have a lot to go, but you know, that means the next Tyree Kill card has a 95 plus Sprinter, 97. And before you know it, Tyree Kill is already endgame speed. So I hope they do avoid that. But again, Ty the beauty of Tyree Kill now is that him being this good of an overall means that he's not just a North and South guy. Tyree Kill back in the day used to have, um, you know, low 70 route running, low 70 catching, 90 speed. Now he has 90 speed with 90 Excel, 89 agility, but with 82 catching, he'll end up in the 80 catching traffic spec catch range. He'll end up with all 80 route running with a 90 plus deep route running with Kems. His release will be above 80, change of direction above a 90. This card's, you know, this card's, the card's going to be a beast. Best wide receiver in the game by far. Definitely excited to play with him day one. But guys, that is it. That is my wide receiver, basically wide receiver Madden 22 predictions. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn that notification bell. Give this video a big thumbs up as always. And of course, smash the like button. Thank you for watching. I'm out. Peace.